The Psalms are the prayer book of the Bible. That's what Eugene Peterson taught when he was a professor of mine at Fuller Seminary. This was before he wrote The Message, a very famous translation of the Bible. In fact, we got to hear some of his translations of the Psalms before it was even put in print. But that always stuck with me, that idea that the Psalms is the prayer book of the Bible. Just think about some of the famous Psalms. Let's take a look at some of them uh, right now. Psalms 1 says, They are like trees planted by streams of water, which yield their fruit in its season, and their leaves do not wither. In all that they do, they prosper. This sets up the whole book of Psalms. For it tells us that if we meditate on the word of God, we will have an abundance of life. Let's take a look at another one, the 23rd Psalm. Verse 4 says this, Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. Whenever I hear this passage, I think of my Sunday school teacher, Don Kerr, who served in World War II. He told us the story of how he was in a firefight with a company of men, and only two of them survived. And during that whole ordeal, that passage kept going through his head. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I fear no evil. So passages from the Psalms can sustain us and encourage us and give us strength even in the most terrible of circumstances. Another psalm was uttered by Jesus on the cross, Psalm 22. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Why are you so far from helping me? From the words of my groaning. Oh my God, I cry by day, but you do not answer, and by night, but find no rest. So the Psalms serve as a template for our prayers, and they teach us how to pray. And that takes us to Psalm 130, which we'll be using today as an outline and as a way to think about shaping our own prayer life. So let's take a look at verses 1 through 2. Out of the depths I cry to you, O Lord. Lord, hear my voice. Though your ears be attentive to the voice of my supplications. So that line, I cry to you, O Lord, sets up our prayer life. For prayer starts when we turn to God, when we realize our need for him and know that as we turn to God, he will hear our deepest, most needs and concerns. Let's take a look at the next two verses. If you, O Lord, should mark iniquities, Lord, who could stand? But there is forgiveness with you, so that you may be revered. Forgiveness, then, is another key component of prayer. Going before God with an honest heart, with an open heart, and sharing everything that has happened, even those things that we may be afraid of or ashamed of, or things that we did that might have hurt others, God is willing to listen to us and is willing to forgive us. And because of that, we have new life and new hope, not only with God, but with those around us. Let's take a look at our next two verses. I wait for the Lord, my soul waits, and in his word I hope. My soul waits for the Lord, more than those who watch for the morning, more than those who watch for the morning. So this is the third component of prayer. My soul waits for the Lord. Now that is something we're all getting used to during these days, days when we are to be confined to our homes. And perhaps this is the hardest thing that we've had to do is having to stay still. We're so used to being busy and running around and interacting with this person or that person or watching this or that or being on our screens, but this idea of waiting, of pausing, of putting our life on hold is very different than any of us would expect it. And in many ways, it is very difficult to do. 
But this passage tells us if we wait on the Lord, if we still our soul, then we will be calmed. And by doing so, we will hear God's voice in our ear and we will know what to do. Which brings us to our last two verses. O Israel, hope in the Lord, for with the Lord there is steadfast love, and with him is great power to redeem. It is he who will redeem Israel from all its iniquities. Prayer then ends with this explanation point of hope. We pray because we hope in the Lord, and we know through God's goodness we will have new life as we move forward in all that we do. So let's look at this again to see how it all fits together. I cry to you, O Lord, there is forgiveness with you. So my soul waits, for I find hope in the Lord. I hope you will use this as a pattern for your prayer this week. That you'll start off by saying, Dear God, I need you. I cry to you. Dear God, I give you thanks because with you I am forgiven. And Lord, you give me strength to wait. And in you I find hope. Hope forevermore. We're going to wrap up this session with the words from Amazing Grace, a song which really does summarize this whole passage and reminds us of God's love that comes to us this day. Listen to the words from Amazing Grace. Amazing Grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found, was blind, but now I see. <laughs>